Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be going over how to create a report within Salesforce. Now, I have a lot of other videos on this, but I figured it was a good time to do an updated version. So let's go ahead and click on reports up here. If you don't see it over here in the kind of this tabish area, then you can come over to the three by three and then search for reports. You should be able to see it, click on it, and it'll take you to the exact same thing. From here, we're gonna choose new report. And then you're gonna select the report type. So the report type has you select what type of data that you're going to be using. So be this accounts or opportunities or opportunities and products or with products or opportunities with contact roles. This report type just essentially asks you what groups of data do you want to see? Now, if you're looking to include sets of data that aren't on here already, then I would contact your admin to ask about creating a report type that will fit your needs. But for this tutorial, let's go ahead and go with opportunities since that's a fairly easy example. I'm gonna go start report. Okay, and the first thing that I like to do is update preview automatically. This helps us because then we don't have to save and run the report every single time we make a little change. We can just see the changes in real time. I'm gonna go over here to filters. And currently it's filtering it down so then all the data that I would be able to see is not there. If you're not seeing the correct data that you should be seeing or that you believe you should be seeing, first check with your filters and then also check to see what your security settings are or check with your admin because you might not have access to all the records that you want to see within Salesforce per your overarching security settings. For me, I look just looking at this, I know that the close date is the reason why I'm not seeing any data. So I'm gonna change this from the current fiscal quarter to all time, hit apply, and then I should see a lot more details. All right, from here, there are a few different things that I like to do. Personally, I like to clean this up and get rid of the different columns that I don't think are necessary. So owner role, you can see has no data in it, so there's no point for it to be here. I'm gonna remove the column. And then if we keep scrolling over, there's another one. That's next step. You can also change it over here so you can get rid of next step. And that's kind of how you get rid of fields. Now, if you wanna see a full list of the fields that you can add to your report, you can come over here and look at the full list. You can see it's broken down by the different objects or groups of data that you have within Salesforce. So there's a bunch of information on opportunities because this is an opportunity report type. If you scroll down, you can see there's information about the opportunity owner, which happens to be me currently, but if you were a sales manager and you had 10 different salespeople underneath you, then this might be useful to add. And then we have some information from the account that we can bring over, account address, a bunch of different stuff. And now just to bring this over, if you wanted to bring it over, you, or you would double click it, and then you would be able to see it right there. And then if you wanted to change it, you could either drag it over like that or you can drag it down over here. So these two things are pretty similar in their functions. This has less functions than you would be able to see on this side where all the columns are, but we'll get into that. All right. One thing I do want to mention is the capability of grouping. So this is a really awesome way to show different groups, of course, uh, but it's a way that you can break down your report by different information. A really common one that we see on the opportunity is the stage. So if we grouped it down by stage over here, you can see that we have one opportunity in prospecting, one in qualification, value proposition has a few, and then we have closed one here. So that's a way to break it down by just different information. Other ones that you might see, depending on what you're trying to gain or what information you're trying to glean from your reports, you might do a lead source if you're trying to figure out what is your most valuable lead source. Your type of customer is also a really good one. You can create, I guess, custom groups by a thing called bucketing, which we're not gonna get into, but it's a way to create a fake field within Salesforce to be able to group by. This often makes sense when you are grouping by like a mid, low, high cap scenario, 
where you, the amount of the opportunity, depending on what it is, is classified as a mid, low, or high, and then you'd be able to group it by that. Another one, if you have multiple opportunity owners, would be grouping it by the opportunity owner. Another really awesome feature that I like to use a lot when I am going and creating reports is, especially on this opportunity, is I like to summarize the amount um, of the opportunities, and then we'd be able to see the subtotal by stage. And this typically can be done through a forecasting tool, if you use Salesforce native, for, native forecasting tool, or if you use an additional forecasting tool. But if you're kind of scrappy and you don't have that set up or ready to go, you can see that here. If you went, so I clicked the down carrot, summarized, and then sum, and you could see that it has summarized the amount and then amount by stage. Other things that you can do is you can sort it by account name or you can sort it by like an A to Z or low to high. It will sort it within the group. So let's get rid of this group over here. And if we wanted to go account name, we would just click on it um, and it would go A to Z. But if we were to do amount or expected revenue, then it would do from low to high. It also works with stage, of course, but that we just ungrouped. I am going to group it back by stage for a little bit later on in this tutorial. Other things that we can do that I've kind of touched on are filters. So filters, again, they help narrow down our data a little bit or open up our data, depending on what side of the coin you are <laughs> looking at your report filters at. Uh, your report filter can't go anything beyond what is already in your report type. So currently we are on opportunities we wouldn't necessarily be able to filter it down by anything related to the leads unless it was mapped over or that information was brought over somehow. But we can filter this down. So let's say we only want to see, let's do an amount that is greater than or equal to $100,000. So if we were going to hit apply, then it would go ahead and update it. And now we don't see any of the opportunities that are less than $100,000. All right, and if you wanna get rid of that filter, these four filters up here are ones that you do automatically have that you can't get rid of, but you are able to lock filters. Um, so then anyone coming in to view this report can't change this filter other than yourself. So you'd be able to do that by clicking the lock button and then apply. I'm gonna unlock this. And then if you wanna get rid of it, you can just hit the trash can. All right, let's go ahead and save this here. So the report name is required. Anything with a red asterisk within Salesforce is going to be required. And then the report unique name, that's gonna be auto-generated just so then the Salesforce system doesn't get confused if there are multiple opportunities named opportunity. So it, that's why it has an appendage on the back of a couple alphanumeric values. And then you can add a description if you want to or not. I find it really helpful if you are creating a report for a large group of people to have this so then they can get some context to your report. And then we have the folder. It's kind of like the folders that you have on your computer uh, where you can put this report into. Currently it is in the private report so that's going to be your personal reports. Not even the sysadmin can get into your private reports unless they are in your login and happen to see the report. If this is going to be a public report then go ahead and save it into the correct folder. I'm sure that your Salesforce admin has set up the correct folders for you where you want those things to go. But if this is just for you, for your personal use, then I would go ahead and just leave it in private reports and hit save. All right, now if I hit run, then it's gonna take us to the report viewer. And a couple of things we can do here, we can filter this down again by other things. We can refresh it. If we hit this little refresh button, it does the same thing as the refresh for your browser, but this wouldn't refresh the whole browser, just the report. You can search within the report table. You can edit, save as, which kind of creates a copy of it. You can save, subscribe, export this report as a CSV file. You can delete it or you can add it to a dashboard. Now, finally, one thing that I like to do with reports, um, this is also available for dashboards and kind of what dashboards is built off of is you can create a chart to visualize your data, which can be very, very useful to get a quick view of what is going on with your company. So one thing about charts and I guess dashboarding as a whole 
is that you do need to have at least one grouping. That's why we grouped the stage again after canceling it. You have to have at least one grouping for charting to work with most or all of the report chart types. So there's a lot of different report chart types. Currently, we can't do a stacked bar or a stacked column because we need to have additional groupings, but we can do a bar, column, line, donut, funnel, and scatter plot. So these are all different things to help us visualize our data. Of course, there's going to be times when one report chart type makes sense where others do not. Like for this specific example, the scatter plot doesn't necessarily make sense, but for this, a funnel can make a lot of sense or even the donut chart can make a ton of sense. And that's probably what I would go with. Additionally, the bar and column chart would make sense, but feel free to play around with these. Typically, you can't change any data within an, a report, especially if this is just your report that only you are going to be viewing. Feel free to play around with reporting and what you can do with reporting. Personally, I find it really useful to start off with a question that you want to answer with your data and then go from there. So, the question for an opportunity report might be, how healthy is our pipeline looking and when are can we expect over the next couple of weeks to close a number of deals. With that being said, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can check out the courses down below in the description or on salesforceupskill.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.